Come on! No, not this time. I don't want to hurt you. I don't want either of us to end up killing the other. But we're running out of alternatives. Perhaps it all hinges on tonight. I don't know what it was that bent your life out of shape, but maybe I've been there too. Maybe we could work together. I could rehabilitate you. You don't need to be alone. We don't have to kill each other. Let me help you. I'm not much to draw comparisons between Indian cinema and the West, but I promise the intertwined stories of the Batman and the Joker do hauntingly feel relevant to the movie we'll be looking at today. So hold on to that thought until we come back to it later. In 2004, a famous Italian writer Massimo Carlotto published his novel by the name of Death's Dark Abyss, which took a deep psychological dive into the tale of two men irreversibly bound to each other by a savage crime. This is where director Sriram Raghavan borrows the plot for his acutely titled 2015 thriller Badlapur. And I say acutely titled for a specific reason. See, Badlapur was largely a story about badla or revenge, but it was also a story about change or badlao. When Varun Dhawan of all people was announced to star in a revenge drama before the release of Badlapur, Masses were quick to draw parallels with his Student of the Year co-star Siddharth Malhotra's earlier release, Equilin. After all, both the film's basic plot involved a husband seeking revenge for his wife's murder. But those comparisons ended the day Badlapu released. While on one hand, Equilin took a more traditional, on-the-nose, dramatized route to tell this basic story, Sriram Raghavan's Badlapur took this premise and turned the entire idea of heroes and villains on its head with a more twisted approach with its main characters, Raghu and Like. One whose attempted bank robbery in the beginning ultimately results in two casualties, and the other whose perfect little life comes crumbling down when he discovers that the two were his own wife and son. What follows is the movie remarkably exploring the themes of grief and redemption through its two protagonists, almost taking a jab at the pointlessness of the very thing it promises to deliver, revenge. And this is perhaps why Badlapur, rather than ending with a prophetically fulfilling bang like its predecessors in the revenge genre, ends on a subdued, somber note. Therefore, calling Badlapur a straight-out revenge film would be an understatement of gigantic magnitudes. I would rather classify it as an anti-revenge film, if that makes any sense. When Laik is sentenced to 20 years in prison after the incident and diagnosed with cancer a decade and a half into his sentence, he first requests Raghu for pardon so that he could live his remaining days as a free man. Raghu, who subjected himself to a self-imposed isolation of his own for the same amount of time in order to mourn over his loss, has still not gotten over the incident. In fact, the movie itself begins with an old African proverb, the axe forgets, but the tree remembers. The axe being like, and the tree being Raghu. But let's not jump the gun here. Let's take them on one by one. Raghu starts off the film as our short shot protagonist an everyday marketing executive, just like any one of us, who just lost his family in a horrendous incident. He's the one who commands our sympathies right off the start because he's the one we relate to the most. It's quite evident that Raghu is the Batman in this situation, due to a very similar arc their characters go through, and the makers don't leave any stones unturned in facilitating these comparisons. Like earlier in the film, we see a portrait of Raghu dressed as Batman standing with his son, his son, who he coincidentally named Robin. But does that automatically build like as the Joker in this situation? Well, not quite. As the plot progresses, we see Raghu, a now broken man, abandoning his perfectly normal life to alienate himself in a town called Badlapur. Located somewhere between Mumbai and Pune, the station carries its own importance to the narrative of change. It is said that at one point, Badlapur used to be a station where the trains would change tracks, 
a metaphor for how Raghu undergoes a transition while staying in isolation for over 15 years there. His metamorphosis kickstarts when Raghu realizes that the system failed in getting him justice. What follows is the man going out on business for his own, and that too in the most twisted of ways possible. Of course, by this point, he's already raped Like's girlfriend as an act to torture Like behind the bars. But what he does next proves to be even more gruesome, as Raghu, finding out the whereabouts of Like's partner in crime, beats him and his innocent wife to a bloody pulp with a hammer. It's a shocking and unsettling turn of events that instantly take all our sympathies away from the once happily married men. And that only because we, the normal folks, are ill-equipped to feel for a protagonist who kills an innocent. Raghavan uses Raghu here as his subject to study the psychology of grief. And he raises a fundamental question about human behavior in doing so. If you were in Raghu's place at the start, and you were later given the opportunity to dole out your own form of justice, would you do it? Raghu, in hindsight, completes his transition at this point. He, in essence, is the Joker now, sharing the same traits of disdain and lack of empathy as the Clown Prince of Gotham. The next time you watch Badlapur, look out for the song Badla Badla. It literally talks about this exact change in him as a policeman conveniently refers to him as the Joker. Hi Manoj, Joker is Like, on the other hand, starts the film off as our one true antagonist. If him being one of the original robbers wasn't enough for us to disgust him, he was the one who actually pulled the trigger on Raghu's family, kickstarting the whole commotion to begin with. But when Like gets captured and subsequently sentenced to 20 years in prison, Raghavan methodically establishes a story of redemption for our supposed villain. And by the end of the movie, we frankly don't want any literal revenge to take place anymore. Like has already atoned for his sins, spending over 15 years in jail and then being diagnosed with a fatal stomach cancer, Like in a way is already at the receiving end of a divine karmic revenge. And yet after all of this, the slightest possibility of spending his remaining few days with Jimli excites him. His relationship with her, in a way, is as pure as the one shared between Raghu and his wife, despite him being a criminal and her being a prostitute. The only difference here is that unlike Raghu, Like's outlook to life is a very optimistic one. His fierce survival instinct, and that too when the odds are stacked toweringly against him, steadily starts to earn our admiration. For the most part in Badlapur, director Shriram Raghavan accompanies Raghu's slow dehumanization on one hand with Like's humanization on the other. But it's still not quite there, until of course, Like himself lands at Badlapur, you know, the crossroads of change, to confront Raghu for his partner's murder and to find out where his money is. friend. What starts off as a physical altercation for money soon turns into the catalyst for change in like in this penultimate scene from the film. Unable to come to terms with how cold-bloodedly Raghu butchered his partner and his innocent wife, like pours his heart out in what becomes his definitive turning point in the film. Confused. The guy who returns from Badlapur neither has any flavor for money nor wants to cause any more disruptions. And so in an ultimate move of sacrifice, Like turns himself in for the murder of his own partner, effectively handing Raghu another chance to lead a normal life. The same second chance that neither Raghu nor fate had in store for Like himself. And so finally, 
Like completes his redemption arc as an inmate until his inevitable death, leaving us with nothing but appreciation for someone who was sensible enough to understand the futility of revenge and put an end to it. Badlapur, just like Raghavan's earlier films, is a dark noir, which ends up raising more questions than answers about why ordinary people do extraordinary things. His fascinating study of good and evil is spearheaded by the absolutely terrific performances by its two leads, Varun Dhawan and Nawazuddin Siddiqui, capping off a haunting movie that turns out to be more tilted towards human psychology than the simple revenge saga it poses to be at first glance. Thank you for watching the video guys, I hope you enjoyed it. What did you think about Raghavan's take on Raghu and Like in Badlapur when you first saw it? Let me know in the comment section down below. Please make sure to subscribe to Film Mentor if you haven't already, and press the bell icon to never miss similar videos like this in the future. With that out of the way, have a safe week ahead. My name is Amir, and I will see you soon.